I got. I'm starting to feel a little nostalgic, gang. I am. This time of year, you know what I mean. The weather hasn't changed at all, so it's difficult. But <laughs> mentally, emotionally, I can feel. Just even looking at my children, I'm like, oh. Oh, that's a whole different. Body. I'm doing a lot of that. Yeah. What about you, Ian? What should we, are, you, are you in the vibe? I, I don't have kids, but I bet if I looked at your kids, I'd, you know, I'd be like, or something. <laughs> I, <laughs> or not, yeah. you know, just because I'm like, oh, it's my friend and his family. That's beautiful, you know, and then I'm, my, my Xbox should be showing up soon, so things are looking <laughs> up for me. <laughs> Uh, Joe, did you get one? Oh, yeah, I got did one. Did you? Yes. The Series X. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yes. legitimately bought one or? Le legitimately bought it. Didn't spend $1,400 on a sneaker website. Got it the old fashioned way. Stealing it from my neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> now, I cannot help. What, is, what have we got here, Lou? What's happening here? It's it says. A, a model of the garage. Is this a real. Oh, is it really? Wow. I actually missed the way you pronounce garage. <laughs> it's a, it, it, look at that. That is a real. Live mini version of the set that we built in the garage. And I shall tell you what's really, I mean, this is beautiful, Lou. I really, but I shall tell you what's really odd in my garage still is like this, <laughs> and all of these pictures <laughs> are still there. And an Amazon delivery guy came, it was my daughter's birthday at the weekend, and he arrived with this box. And I, I sort of opened the gate and I was like, oh, just follow me, because um, my daughter can't see this because it said on the side what it was. So I said, just wait there, I'm gonna open the garage. And I opened the garage, and it's just, it's full of pictures of me <laughs> and a huge sign that says The Late Late Show with James Corden. He was holding this box like... <laughs> and I thought, I could, either, I could either explain this or just be like, yep, this is my garage, this is what I do. <laughs> this is why I still got lights, there's still a desk, there's still a chair in there. It's, like, so weird. You should have been like, I saw what you wrote on that YouTube comment. You think it's easy? You sit in there. You try it, you try it. <laughs> Thank you for that, Lou. I will genuinely treasure that forever. That is absolutely beautiful. And Lou's written here, he's put, I hope everyone has a safe holiday so we don't end up back in here. And I think, wow. I think that really does echo Bravo. the sentiments of how we all felt. Bless you, Lou. Let's move on and talk about the news. President-elect Joe Biden went to Georgia to campaign for the Senate runoff election. And during his speech last night, he referred, he referenced the state's multiple recounts. And thank you for standing strong to make sure your voices were heard your votes were counted, and counted, and counted again. <laughs> I'm starting to feel like I won Georgia three times. <laughs> yeah, we feel the exact same way. <laughs> when Trump heard this, he was like, Georgia voted three times? Giuliani, get down there and hold a press conference at a hot tub emporium. <laughs> I must say, Biden looked lively. He looked sharp there. You know, of course, yeah. it helps that we... We stopped the clip right before Biden rambled on about how cobbler is better than pie. Because <laughs> of all the crummies, you know, but good. And at another point, Biden spoke. <laughs> you know the crummies, you got the crummies, it's oh, in yeah. the corner of your mouth. I say to Jill, I go, look at all these crummies, Jill. And she says, well, I'll do a cobbler. And I say, no, cobblers, and where was I? Oh, yeah, climate change. Um, <laughs> At another point, Biden spoke glowingly about one of the Senate candidates, Reverend Raphael Warnock, uh, although his comments were mostly about his physique. And Reverend Warnock, the hard you're working, I don't know how the heck you stay in such great shape, man. You look good, you used to get up and do it, man, I tell you. I reached up and grabbed his arm, it's as big as my thigh. Joe, he's a reverend. <laughs> <laughs> the worst part of all this is now all I'm thinking about is what it would feel like to grab Joe Biden's thigh. <laughs> Arm as big as my thigh. That's quite the compliment, although it's less impressive when you actually see Joe Biden's thighs. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Donald Trump is still president of the United States, and it doesn't appear that he plans to go quietly. According to reports, he's considering appointing a special prosecutor to investigate Hunter Biden. 
hey, you know, at least Trump's using his final days in office to focus on what's affecting the day-to-day -day lives of real Americans. Hunter Biden. <laughs> <laughs> She's still trying to take down Biden's son. I feel like, I genuinely feel like Trump is just so desperate to win something, anything. I wouldn't be surprised if Trump's next move is challenging Jake Paul to a boxing match. <laughs> Apparently, Trump is considering appointing Jeffrey Rosen, who is set to take the position of acting attorney general next week as the special counsel. I don't know. I honestly don't know if Jeffrey Rosen has the time. He's usually pretty busy this time of year, starring in movies as the snow miser. Oh, man. <laughs> Meanwhile, Trump's neighbors in Florida are taking legal action to make sure he can't permanently move into Mar-a-Lago after he leaves the White House. Apparently, current zoning regulations ban anybody from using the club as a full-time residence. Can you imagine not being allowed to live somewhere in Florida? <laughs> <laughs> That's dark, man. That's dark. I mean, what, would it, what do you think it would be like to have Trump as a neighbour, Reg? What would it be like? I think it would be like, you know, like, it's like the, the Eye of Sauron. You know, like, it would just be this dark void that people would inexplicably avoid. Like, right. Like, not even thinking about it. It would just, like, just magnetically repel people. Yeah. I've no... I've looked at pictures of Mar-a-Lago. No bit of me wants to go there. Mar-a-Lago Mar looks like a place that only serves dry sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're absolutely right. You're, you're like, uh, hey, can I get a little mayo mustard and they take it back to the kitchen, it comes back and it's just... Still dry. Still dry. Still dry. Yeah. Dry meat. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> <coughs> you dry, meat. Yeah. Yeah. dry meat, sort of rubbery potato chips. Yeah. Awful. Yeah. Awful. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I agree. But the neighbours, the neighbours don't want Trump at Mar-a-Lago. You know where they wanted to go, Guillermo? You know where they wanted to go? Far-a-Lago. <laughs> guys, guys, that's our show. We'll be back tomorrow night. And did you guys see this? Despite CDC warnings about holding indoor gatherings, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo went ahead with his annual holiday party last night. 900 people were invited. Only 70 RSVP'd and even fewer showed up. Damn, those are some 10th grade James's house party ratios. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever do that? Do you ever have a house party and no, none of the good people come? It's really yeah. annoying. The good people... I only had a couple, but the good people came to mind. Yeah, OK. Nah, I'm sorry. Sure, good for you. We... <laughs> we did just throw all the trash into a wetland right behind my house, and my mom found it almost immediately. She was like, this was the cover-up scheme? And I was like, yeah, we put it behind the fence. And it was like a bunch of old Milwaukee's in a bag. She found it. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to have a house party when my parents were away, and the only person that turned up was a guy, I won't say his name, but all I can tell you, and this is why it wasn't a good party, he was obsessed with fire. Do you remember that kid at school? You remember the kid at school, just obsessed with fire? Absolutely obsessed with fire. That His was name me. was David, and he also always used to come to school with a backpack that was just too heavy for his back. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, he'd walk to school like this, like it would be so heavy and he'd just go like this. <laughs> yeah. He was the best person that came to our party. <laughs> And we, like, got some... We had some... We were, like, 16, we got a bit of alcohol, and he was like, cool, should we set it on fire? And we were like, David, no, <laughs> stop! <laughs> so he had really singed eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about COVID, but it sounds like Mike Pompeo just tested negative for friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got to say, though, this is a pity that no-one turned up to this party, because I say this unironically. I genuinely do mean this Mike Pompeo looks like he'd be fun at a party. <laughs> Wouldn't he? Hey, when he's had a couple of drinks, he loosens up. Yeah. He goes, Mike Pompeo! <laughs> Do you know what I mean? He's the sort of dude you're like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to go. They're like, Mike Pompeo's going, all right, let's go, it'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he's 100% the sort of guy that helps your grandma do a keg stand. <laughs> and here's some news from Ireland. Santa and his horse-drawn sleigh were stopped on the road by police because Santa's sleigh didn't have proper headlights. <laughs> I mean, Rudolph, you had one job. 
One job, Rudolph. You know, this is a serious issue. It is. Santa should have proper headlights. This is exactly how Grandma got run over by a reindeer. <laughs> True story. Yeah. But he was pulled over by the cops. You know, Santa was like, listen, before you search the sleigh, you should know a lot of people asked for cocaine this year. <laughs> You know, we're, we're, all, we're all dreaming of a white Christmas officer. <laughs> and we wanted to show you this. Trojan Condoms is launching a new line of fragrances that they're hoping will appeal to a Gen Z market. A Trojan Condoms fragrance. It's the first Trojan product that's for no one's pleasure. <laughs> and like many other Trojan products, if you wear this stuff, you definitely don't have to worry about getting anybody pregnant. <laughs> I actually thought this was nice. They even have classes showing you how to apply the perfume to a banana. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Susan. I appreciate that. You can always rely on Susan if it gets a bit blue. <laughs> Thank you. She zones out on the political stuff. She don't care about Mike Pompeo's party. Gets a bit blue, that's when you hear the truckle. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, some Hollywood news to pass along. You may have seen this. Tom Cruise is making headlines because he got angry on the set of his upcoming Mission Impossible 7. Apparently, some crew members were not following COVID safety protocols and crews went off at them at one point saying, quote, if I see you doing this again, you're f gone. Have you heard the audio? Have you no. heard it, Reg? No. Oh, it's fantastic. Oh, I can't wait to hear that. He goes off. Have you heard it, Ian? Oh, I've listened to it eight times since the monologue started. Yeah. yeah. I, it genuinely, it got me fired up. I was like, yes. It's great. He starts talking about how, you know, we're people, we're people are going to lose their jobs if this film shuts down. And he, he really goes off of them. I didn't even know it. Tom Cruise is the tough but fair stepdad we all need right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know that we're living in strange times when the most dangerous stunt on the set of Mission Impossible is when a crew member gave someone a high five. <laughs> But the whole film crew does seem to be taking the incident to heart. In fact, they've already changed the name of the movie to Mission Impossible Seven Feet Away or You're <laughs> Gone. <laughs>